So far, there's quite limited news coverage in China on European semiconductor industry. Could you briefly illustrate what IC markets are like in European countries? There is a quite similar situation if you are looking at the different uh, uh, European countries. So if you are looking at the, 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 the leading European companies, you are talking about ST, Infineon, NXP, AMS, that are really, uh, AMS, Osram, that are really, well, important. Uh, but it's outside of this leading age semiconductor. It's power devices, it's LED, it's sensors. It's uh, a lot of different developments that are, not targeting the leading edge because all these companies stopped investing in leading edge technologies long time ago, but they are very strong on automotive, industrial, some of the consumer business uh, because of the of the sensor activities and so on and so on. So they are really targeting applications that are quite different compared to the well significant part of the semiconductor business that is based on logic and that is based on on uh, memory. They are not there. So it's adapted to the industry of Europe. That means there is no more mobile phone maker in Europe. There is no laptop manufacturers in Europe. So the developments are focusing on automotive business, industrial, medical, that are very strong in Europe, and few other defense that is very strong also for the European companies, but not in the leading edge technologies. The industry in Europe is facing two issues, and the governments in Europe is facing two issues. Same issues compared to the US government or the Chinese government saying, okay, we have no leading edge manufacturing in Europe. Maybe it's a problem. And well... It's a problem, but there is no business for leading edge semiconductor in, in Europe. There is no mobile phone maker. There is no smartphone maker. There is no server maker in volume that are targeting the, the data center industry. So there is no need locally for that kind of, of uh, leading edge. So all the push linked to governments, also the R&D center has been, well, several years ago, to be able to push the creation of startup in microprocessor, in AI chip, in technologies that are using leading edge to grow European companies that will be able to compete at least partially to uh, NVIDIA, to Intel, to that kind of very strong US players. As I said, it's not about the night that results will happen. It's, uh, it's something that will impact the industry in the next four to five years. Europe is trying to attract five nanometer, two nanometer fab like US has done. But I think for me, it's, it's not the objective. The objective is to have such fab, but in the next seven to 10 years, not in the next three years, because there is no market in Europe. So um, the, the challenge for the European companies is, no, is more to bring back in Europe what is needed in terms of manufacturing for the automotive industry. So all this 14 nanometer to 28 nanometer manufacturing that is done in China, that is done in Taiwan at the moment, this needs to come back to Europe and time is needed to do that. Since you mentioned there's lack of market in Europe, do you think the governments would collaborate to build such markets and bring more chip makers back to Europe? Taking into account the political environment, the support of the industry, the talents, the cost of living in these different countries, Europe is, is not a cheap country to live. It's expensive to live in Germany, it's expensive to live in France, in Switzerland, and so on. So it's always complex to balance a political wish to attract big manufacturing when it's better to have such manufacturing elsewhere in the world because you, you have a pool of talents and you have a cost of uh, manufacturing that is much lower. So there is a rethinking to do that in Europe that is extremely important and that is on the way at the moment saying, okay, yes, we need to attract that kind of leading edge, but we need to attract that because there is a market locally and we need to attract that in a way that is sustainable and that is really able to to last for the next five to ten years and to continue to develop that and and there is there is a lot of discussion at the moment a, a plan has not been put in place and has not been implemented when i talked to sia a few months ago they mentioned that building new fabs in the us is like 14 percent more expensive than doing that in asia is europe in the same situation Exactly the same. We, we have done that kind of evaluation and it's yes, it's, it's between 15 to 20 percent uh, more expensive. It's bad industrial decision. If you create a manufacturing site that is from the start 20 percent less efficient in terms of cost compared mm -hmm. to what you could have done in Asia, you're starting to try to run as fast as possible with 100 kilograms on your back. It's not working. So you need to have organization. You need to have uh, 
well, support from the, the different governments, from the, the European Commission in order to offset that. We need to attract investment for this leading edge. Great. But how can we take profit of ASML? ASML is the leader for lithography. There is no other company like ASML worldwide. How can we take the benefit of ASML, use what they have developed in order to support the European industry? There is leading R&D center in Europe with IMEC, with Leti, with the multiple Fraunhofer Institute. How to use them better in order to recreate this environment in Europe and not to push technology development, but to push technology industrial implementation. And there is a rethinking at the moment of the European strengths to play what we have in our hands in order to be able to be well as smart as possible. Europe will never be cost competitive. It's not a way of working. The German cars are not cost competitive. They are expensive, but they provide added value. And this is what we have to think on the European ground, saying that, well, a fab will not be cost effective. But we need to understand what is the value we can bring in order to offset this 20% higher cost. Thank you.